An interactive quiz in Microsoft PowerPoint is not only a great classroom resource, but it's also a really good project for students to learn, uh, helping them understand about efficiency, about linking, and about controlling Microsoft PowerPoint a little better. Here's an example of a quiz in PowerPoint, which I'll show you how you can create. We've got our slide one here with the question, and this is a simple true or false question. Uh, if we click on false here, which is the incorrect answer, uh, then we are immediately told that this is wrong. So we can go back, have another go. Let's click on true. And this time we're told, yes, we're correct. So that's fine. We can go on to the next question. So question two, this is no longer true or false. We've now got uh, four possible choices. So which key on the keyboard will play a presentation? Again, let's click uh, an incorrect answer. Let's try F4. That is wrong. So let's try F5 and clicking that button tells us it's correct. And then uh, finally, there are three questions in this quiz. Here we have slightly more information. So which of the following is not a standard slide layout? And again, if we choose the correct answer, three content, then we're told that's correct. And this is just three questions. So we click on next. And if we want to, we can continue playing this quiz. There is no way of progressing through this quiz by simply uh, clicking on the background uh, or using the arrow keys on the keyboard. It's locked. And the only way of progressing through the quiz uh, is by answering the questions and clicking on next to the next question. So I'll explain how to create this whole quiz and hopefully you'll find that really useful. Hello, so here is the quiz that you've just seen broken down uh, actually in PowerPoint. You can see it's just three slides. Um, this is for a three question slide, uh, three question quiz. Uh, I've got my question one, question two, and question three. And then I've got my end of quiz slide, and just one slide for correct and one slide for wrong. A lot of people, when they create quizzes in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, they think entirely sequentially. In other words, uh, they would have this question and then a true or a correct slide and then a false slide or a wrong slide and then they'd have their second question and then they have another correct and wrong slide then their question and another two slides with correct or wrong and that's not efficient um, and if you want to expand the quiz in future it takes a lot longer to do this is much much easier we have one correct slide one wrong slide and the basic answer to how we're creating uh, these buttons is by using something called action buttons. Uh, let's go into uh, this first question here, for example. Uh, so I've got my question at the top, and these are two action buttons here, um, and this is also an action button. So it's all action buttons. Where are action buttons? I'll show you that quickly, and once you've seen that, you may be able to run with this idea uh, at that point. But let me just show you that one. Uh, so you need to go to the Insert tab at the top there, and then we'll click on the Shapes tab. And at the very bottom of Shapes tab, you have Action Buttons. A lot of these have icons on them, uh, which may be of use, but personally I prefer using the Custom Action button at the very bottom right corner of this menu. Click on that, and now we can draw out our shape. And we can color it and do everything else later on. But the first thing we've got here is this action settings. Uh, and this allows you to select hyperlink. And then if you click on this drop down menu, uh, you can see a number of different options. So the next buttons, for example, will all link to the next slide. The back buttons, which you see on the correct and the wrong slides, they will link to the last slide viewed. Not the previous slide, but the last slide the person looked at. Now that's really, really important because if we just go back to the overall layout here, if I've answered true on this question one, and I'm taken therefore, there's this button here, links to slide five, which is correct, 
So this true button here links directly to slide 5. This back button here simply links to the last slide I viewed. Not the previous slide, which would be slide 4, the end of quiz, but the last one I looked at, which is this slide, slide 1. My next button jumps me to slide 2, and here again I've got three buttons which all link to slide 6. This one, the wrong one. This back button again links to the last slide I viewed, which is this one, question 2, slide 2. And this F5 button here, this links to slide 5, this one here, and again that back button of course, as it did the first time, still links to the last slide I viewed, which this time is slide 2. So by having this back button on each of these two slides link to the last slide I viewed, then whichever question we're on, once we're sent to the result slide, we are then going to be sent back to the same question that we've just been looking at, the one we've just been answering. So that's really important. You'll also notice that my end of quiz slide is not at the end of the quiz. The reason for that is that each of these next buttons in the question slides links to the next slide. Not linked directly to, so this button here doesn't link directly to slide 2, it's just the next slide, whatever the next slide is. So I've literally created a button here with next on, I've added the hyperlink of next slide, and then I've simply copied that button and pasted it on this slide, pasted it on this slide, and then each of these links to whatever the next slide happens to be. So when we've answered question three, which is the last question in the quiz, this next button then takes us to the end of quiz slide, rather than either the correct or wrong ones, which wouldn't make sense. And on this slide, we could either have an end button, or we could have a play again button, as I've got here, which directly links me back to slide one. So back on slide one here, let's right click on this button and choose hyperlink. And there we have the options to go to the last slide viewed, let's say. Uh, by the way, if you wanted to end the show, you can see the hyperlink here, end show. So at the end of the quiz, you can either have an end quiz or you can have a play again, go back to the beginning link up to you. Uh, let's put an end show in here just for now um, and click OK. Uh, then of course we can change the uh, design of this in the format tab. So let's just uh, change that to black. Right click on this and edit text so we can type some text in, end quiz. And then we can obviously format that. and increase the font size a little bit. There we are, so it looks like the other buttons there. Um, now I'm going to cut that and I'm going to paste it into this uh, slide here, end quiz, pop it there, uh, and let's, uh, let's just test this. So we're going to hit F5 and we know that one is true. Okay, that's fine. Then we've gone to the next question. We know that F5 is the correct answer there. That is correct. Let's go on to the next question. And it's the three content answer here. We're correct. Do you know I'm getting quite good at this IT thing here? Click on next. There we are, end of quiz. So that next button is taking us on to the next slide each time, whatever order they're in. And here's my end quiz button, which if I click, ends the quiz. So the secret really is in making sure that you go to insert shapes and using this custom action button at the bottom uh, and then either using the action settings menu when it pops up or right clicking on it afterwards and going to hyperlink. Um, and then choosing these. Just one um, thing that I, a mistake I notice a lot of people sometimes make is if you go to insert shapes and you think, well, I don't want a, a rectangle, I want a, a fancy button like a, an, an arrow, say. And you can right click on that and you can go to hyperlink. And it looks a bit different, uh, but you 
spot here you've got place in this document you think oh there we are you know I, I can link to direct slides here that's no problem what you'll notice is that you don't have the option of linking to the last slide viewed you have previous slide which is the one before it next first last or linking to specific slides but you don't have the last slide viewed you don't have end show so you're missing a lot of those uh, important links you can't make an interactive quiz like this um, using those shapes you have to use the action button so that's that's something that's uh, important just to point out there um, so what I'm going to do at this stage is uh, if this information here is enough for you you, you get the idea uh, that's fine uh, I don't mind if you stop playing this uh, video straight away and run off and make a quiz I hope it works for you um, I hope you enjoy it and uh, if you do find it really useful then please do before you go click thumbs up on this uh, video and consider subscribing but if you're not entirely sure uh, then by all means stay with me and what I'm going to do is create a quiz uh, from scratch a very simple one question quiz from scratch um, so you can see exactly how it's made okay so let's close this one we'll save that and I'm going to open up PowerPoint and have a blank presentation there we are um, and the layout I'm going to have title only so my question will be at the top here and then my option buttons will be at the bottom so let's have a, a question so um, is this a question that's my question uh, now I need to have uh, two buttons for this one uh, and you can have as many buttons as you want you can have one two four eight whatever number of buttons you want on a question so you can have true or false uh, all sorts of things like that but I'm going to have simply a yes or no option here so I'm going to go to insert shapes and then the custom action button down here and we'll leave the hyperlink for the moment because we haven't got a correct or a wrong slide we'll do that later we'll add the uh, the hyperlink later so I'm just going to edit text and put the option yes uh, let's just change the color just so we can see uh, how all this works make the answer a little bit bolder there we are uh, and then once I've done that one button I'm going to copy it and paste it and then underneath here we'll have no uh, so now we need to have a correct and an incorrect slide so let's uh, have a new blank slide and we'll insert a text box and this one will be our correct slide so let's now increase the font and there we are so it's nice and friendly we'll align this uh, to the center of the slide there we are so it's definitely uh, centered horizontally there um, and now we need to have a button that allows us to go back to whatever the last slide was that we viewed so let's go to insert shapes custom action button and this one we know it's going to be the last slide viewed and then we'll edit the text and type back and then we'll just format this so it uh, looks the same and then once I've done that for the correct slide I can also just copy that slide and paste it underneath and then we'll call this our wrong slide there we go and because this back button is already programmed to link to the last slide viewed uh, we don't have to worry about that you can click on a uh, right click on it and edit hyperlink and see that there it is it's still uh, retaining that action just one quick point actually I've, some people right click when they're inside the text um, and you'll see that if I right click inside the text I don't get the option to edit hyperlink I just get an option to put a hyperlink in there's not one there uh, what that'll do is it will make the text into a link but not the button although of course if the button already has a link you could end up with a button that links to two different places depending on whether you click on the button or the text 
It'll also make the text turn into a hyperlink, so it'll be colored, underlined, and, and so forth. So whenever you're um, adding a link or editing a link uh, on a button, make sure you're clicking on the border and not inside it where you could be adding uh, a link to the text instead. So there we are. We've done our one correct and our one wrong slide. That's it. Um, so now what we have to do is decide on which one is going to link to which one. So the yes button is our correct uh, question or correct answer. So I'll right click on the border of that, click on hyperlink, and then we're going to hyperlink to. Um, now we need to link to a specific slide. So let's click on slide here. Uh, and which slide is it going to link to? Is it slide 2 or is it slide 3? Well, it's the correct one, so that's slide 2. So let's click OK and click OK again. And now our No button is going to link to slide 3. So let's right click on the edge of it, click on Hyperlink. Hyperlink to a specific slide and that's going to be slide 3. Click OK, click OK. At this point, we've done a quiz. Um, we can have a look at this. If I click F5 on the keyboard, uh, you can see, is this a question? And if I click on no, I'll go to the wrong page, click on the back button. We're back to this question. And I click on yes, and we're correct, and we go back. So there we are. Um, so that's working fine, no problem at all. There are a couple of problems, though. Um, one of the problems is, again, I'll show you this. If I click F5, is this a question? If I don't click on one of these two buttons, if I just click somewhere on the uh, presentation, I get correct. And then if I click again, I get wrong. And then I click again, it ends. Because, of course, that's what normally happens with a PowerPoint presentation. You click on the slide and it progresses automatically to the next slide. But that's not what we want for this. What we want is for the only way a user is able to uh, progress through a quiz to be by clicking on the buttons. So how do we prevent someone from progressing through a presentation by clicking on the slide anywhere at all or indeed by using the arrow keys on the keyboard? Well the answer is up here in slideshow. If we click on slideshow and then we click set up slideshow the default option here is to be presented by a speaker in full screen. Change that to browsed at a kiosk full screen. That one change is all you need. Let me show you now. If I click F5, there we are, is this a question? I'm clicking on the slide and it's not doing anything at all. I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard. It's not going anywhere. The only way in which I can move on from this slide is by choosing one of these uh, questions here, one of these buttons here. And again, on this slide again, I can click anywhere I like. It's not going to move me on. The only option I've got is to click on these buttons, which is why, of course, you might possibly want to have an end show button at some point. Now, once you've got that basic setup, it's very simple to add more questions. You don't have to add any more correct or wrong slides. You just simply add more questions. So let's uh, let's copy this slide here, slide one, and paste it. And then let's change this question. Uh, so let's just say, um, is the World Wide Web the same thing as the internet? Okay, so here we are, another question. And this is again, just simply a yes or no question. But you could, as I said before, and as I demonstrated at the beginning, have uh, true or false, have um, four different answers, six different answers. Um, those answers could be full sentences, whatever you like. You could, uh, you know, make these buttons as long or as big as you like and put a whole paragraph of, of text in there if you really want. Uh, it's up to you. I'm just keeping this simple to try and keep this uh, video as short as possible. So here we are. Now this time, um, yes is, of course, the wrong answer. So what we need to do now is to change this button. So it'll edit the hyperlink of this one. Uh, so instead of linking to the slide that says correct, we're going to link to the slide that says wrong. And then we click OK. Uh, we'll have to change this one as well so that the no button is linking to the correct or to the slide with correct on it. There we are. 
click OK. Now, of course, once we're on this question, we need a button that will progress to the next question. So we need a next slide button. So what I'm going to do just for consistent looks is I'm going to take this button here and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it onto this slide and move it onto the right hand side just because generally back buttons are on the left, forward buttons are on the right, it's the way people expect it to be. So I will change the text to read next and then I will change the action of this button so edit hyperlink and this time it will simply be next slide. Now we are at the top. Click OK. So now let's test our quiz out again. So is this a question? Uh, let's say no, we're wrong. Let's say yes, we're correct. We go back and now we can click on next for the next question. Is the World Wide Web the same thing as the Internet? Yes. Well, no, we're wrong on that one. So we click no and we're correct and so on. So um, I'm not going to add any more questions, I'm going to leave it at that point, but hopefully you can see how simply by copying and pasting um, the questions here with the next button on, obviously you would simply copy this first slide here with the next button on, and by copying that as many times as you like, you can have as many questions in your quiz as you like. All you'd have to do is copy this first slide as many times as you want, and on each slide, simply change the uh, question, change whatever the answers are, perhaps, and just make sure that each button answer links to the correct slide, either correct or wrong. And automatically, the next buttons down here at the bottom right will simply take you on from one question to the next. And if you wanted to have an end quiz uh, slide, then at the end of your list of questions, so after this slide here, we would have one more slide, so in between slide five and six, which would say, end of the quiz, do you want to start again or end? And if you want to start again, then it would link directly to slide one. And if you want to end, then you would simply in the actions panel, choose end show, as I showed you earlier on. So I hope that's made it uh, fairly clear. As I say, producing these quizzes uh, as a classroom resource is really good. Use them as a, a starter activity or a plenary activity, perhaps, um, or indeed getting students to create these quizzes themselves not only gets them to think about the topic and think about uh, providing options and answers and making sure it also helps them to understand a little more about what you can do with PowerPoint other than just simply a bog standard presentation. So putting control buttons in to create something which doesn't even look particularly like PowerPoint. It works like uh, a computer program that they've created with you know, questions and answers and everything. So it doesn't particularly say this is PowerPoint. You can't scroll through it. You have to use the buttons. Um, and I think that, you know, people like that idea. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you did, please do consider giving this video a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or problems at all. Uh, or indeed, if you uh, were successful, uh, let me know. That'd be great. And lots more of these tutorials are available on this channel and on the website, the techtrain.co.uk. So do consider subscribing. Uh, and of course, uh, feel free to share this video as well with other people you feel, feel might uh, find this useful. So thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.